I got sick, and you know most of the story, right? Yeah, um, this is the parts you do know, but I think there's some things you don't know. Um, at first, we thought that I just had the flu or a cold, um, and Mary and Martha didn't really get worried until I stopped eating. Um, Mary is an excellent cook. Martha works hard, but uh, when Mary puts a hurting on the skillets, my goodness, um, many times I left the table, um, rarely did I leave the table without having seconds. Um, so when I stopped eating, um, I could see that my sisters had gotten worried. Um, I couldn't stay warm. Um, I just kept getting worse. Nothing we tried worked. So finally, um, they sent for Jesus. Um, they sent word to tell him that I'd been sick, and they were kind of reassured because he, he told them that the sickness was not to death. So I stopped worrying, and then I got weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. And I remember laying on the bed near the end, thinking, not, why doesn't Jesus come to heal me? Um, because in Bethany, there were still sick people who had met Jesus. Um, yes, he healed many of the lame and the blind. But what Jesus really did was heal them on, on the inside, if they let him. Um, no one who listened to him, who really listened to him, and believed in what he was teaching, ever went away the same. And so... I thought, if Jesus was really my friend and my brother, wouldn't he want to come and see me one last time? Because by now I could barely lift my head off the pillow. And my sisters were keeping vigil because they knew that I would go at any time now. And as I lay there, thinking bitterly about why Jesus didn't show up, I started remembering uh, the passages of Scripture that we had studied a couple of times like uh, Daniel and how Daniel had been saved from the lion's den. But then I remember that those weren't the passages that Jesus called his favorites. Jesus loved Psalm 22 um, for times when he was facing things that were overwhelming. And he often identified with David who kept his heart focused on God even when he was facing overwhelming circumstances. Even if he felt forsaken, um, or Psalm 23, um, even though he, um, they tried to stone him, uh, there was a hit out on him. Um, many times people hoped they could catch him traveling at night and just get rid of him. Um, so he knew that his life uh, was always in danger. And Psalm 23 really comforted him. But I remember, I'll never forget his face when he talked about Job and how when Job heard the, the final news about losing not only all his things, but his family, the ones he cared about, that his first response was to fall down and to worship God. And, and Jesus' eyes practically lit up when he talked about Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael. I don't call them Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's their Baal names. Um, so when he talked about them, he was the most passionate when he got to the part where they said, our God is able to save us. But even if he doesn't, even if he doesn't. So I grabbed both my sister's hands as I lay there weakly. And they could tell I couldn't hold on any longer. And I said, can we really say we be really believe in Jesus? That we love him and we serve him? if we don't still believe, even if he doesn't rescue me. And I laid back on the pillow, thinking about that. And that was a tough moment. And honestly, I know you want to know, but I don't remember anything until, at first I thought I had gotten tangled in the bedclothes you know, the she all wrapped up in the sheets. Uh, and I knew I felt better and that I wasn't sick. And, and then the next thing I remember is 
knowing that even if I couldn't see where I was walking, that I had to get to Jesus because he was calling me and shouting my name. Lazarus, come forth! I finally got to him and they got the bedclothes off me. And when they explained what had happened, I was pretty shaken up. Um, disappointed. And then I remembered that I had just been raised from the dead. And here was Jesus. And I know that the stories tell about how he wept when he heard that I had died. But that's when we wept. Um, he wept to see me again, to, to, I think somehow he knew that I thought he had abandoned me and it was great to be able to tell him that, yeah, I thought that, um, and to talk about how even though he didn't rescue me when I wanted to, that I would follow this man anywhere and do anything he told me because I knew that it would always be right and good. It's been several, many months now, and uh, Jesus himself has been raised from the dead. And I like to think that I know what it feels like to fall asleep thinking you've done all you can do for someone you love. And then for the first thing you hear to be that same voice of love calling you back from an impossible place. And I know that uh, Jesus appeared several times and what I find myself doing is peeking back over my shoulder and wondering when he'll appear again. Um, it's kind of hard for me to look at uh, sickness and difficult circumstances quite the same because even when things look really bad, um, you know, we've been persecuted here around Jerusalem. Um, your life is forfeit if you talk about Jesus um, and yet a, a big part of me longs for the day when he will call my name again and I will see him face to face because the truth is that even though you want to know about what it was like for the man who walked out of the tomb the truth is that the Lazarus that Jesus met that first night he stayed at my house was already dead.